CPM, Vice President, NCS, former presidents here with us. I can see our elder brother here, Professor Chad, standing, uh, sitting there. My colleagues, the fellows of uh, the CPM, good morning to all of you. And uh, may peace, mercy, and blessings be upon you. Yeah. Firstly, I'm glad to be here with you physically. And uh, I want to appreciate our brother, the president of uh, LCS, for bringing us to the beautiful city of uh, Abekuta. Since the time we arrived yesterday evening, I have enjoyed each and every second I spent here. And uh, secondly, I was given the same privilege to address our colleagues four years ago. I couldn't make it due to other commitments, and I was represented then by the director at later, Dr. Abu Khalid Sabu, where he spoke on my behalf. I had a meeting with the provost, and I agreed to be here with you physically. Based on earlier schedule, we want to meet on the Wednesday morning. And uh, only two days ago, I was informed that I must be in Abuja on Wednesday due to other official engagements. And I presented three options to the provost. Number one, either to reschedule our breakfast so that I could be able to be here physically. Secondly, to be in Abuja and create maybe 30 or one hour impossible to join you virtually. Thirdly, to be represented by a colleague, most probably from either the Ministry or the Barrel Standards. I think the only response I received was an email indicating that we are to meet this morning. I personally appreciate the effort of the Provost for rescheduling the event and the convenience for most all of you so that I will be able to meet you face to face. Thank you very much. And I also appreciate all of you for creating time to be here. I know it is not easy. I believe most of us uh, arrived yesterday and if you arrived by road, even from Lagos to this place, most probably you will need time to rest well so that you can welcome maybe by 8.30 or 9 and get ready for the opening ceremony of our conference. But I would like to see the faces of our elders that are supposed to be on their bed by now. <laughs> so I appreciate all of you for making the sacrifice to meet me physically. The provost requested me to be here with you without any talking. And I insisted that talking must be given to me up to this morning was trying to skip away from any request. <laughs> that is what makes it extremely difficult to identify what to discuss with our fellows of our Nigeria computer society. Looking at the theme of our conference this year, that is smart, secure and sustainable nation. If you look at all the keywords, they speak of the fourth industrial revolution. Smart nation, steward nation, and also sustainable nation. So all the three, if you follow them one after the other, they speak of the fourth industrial revolution. Smart nation is about government digital services and the many more. Big data analytics, machine learning, artificial intelligence, robotics and the many more. Steward is more about cyber security. Sustainable nation is mostly about soft skills. 
So it is because of this, I think, I need to emphasize about the role of our leaders when it comes to fighting industrial revolution. As we all know that Africa, particularly our part of Africa, was not significantly part of the first industrial revolution. Not in the second industrial revolution, and at the same time not in the third industrial revolution. The only opportunity we have to be actively is in the fourth industrial revolution. There is no doubt about this. And we have an excellent opportunity to be part and parcel of that. Furthermore, if you look at all the previous revolutions, you will discover that only few individuals came up with an inter with invention that would completely change the world. And their communities, their countries, and sometimes even their continent can claim the credit of that. It doesn't require each and every one to be actively involved. If we can get few of us to make the difference, we will discover that will make our country, that will make our continent very proud. There is no doubt about this. There was an argument whether we are still at the tail end of the third industrial revolution or we are already in the fourth industrial revolution. The most popular opinion we have been in the fourth industrial revolution since 2001. By implication, we have spent 21 years so far in the fourth industrial revolution, and that is the strongest opinion of uh, most of our scholars, people like uh, the founder and the executive chairman of the World Economic Forum, a German engineer, a German economist, and a German scientist by them. Professor Klaus Schwab, that we are already in the fourth industrial revolution, and the fourth industrial revolution is about the creation of a virtual world with uh, disruptive technologies like artificial intelligence, robotics, cyber security, big data, analytics, nanotechnology, biotechnology, cloud computing, augmented reality, virtual reality, fifth generation, and many more. These are the disruptive technologies that brought about the fourth industrial revolution. So we have another world now, which is a virtual world. And sometimes we are so much addicted and attached to the virtual world more than our physical world. Sometimes we know what is happening in our virtual world more than how we know what is happening in our physical world. So the front industrial revolution is all about that. In addition to soft skills, critical thinking, analytical thinking, collaborative thinking, project management, creativity, and the many. Briefly, before discussing the fourth industrial revolution, in order to vindicate that all the previous revolutions were led by few individuals, take for example the first industrial revolution, which took place around 1750 up to around 1840s. At that time, before the first industrial revolution, the world war was engaged mostly in agriculture, particularly agrarian agriculture, trade, usually through trade and butter, and traditional leadership like monarchy. These were the three things dominated the world, agriculture, and it was even the mainstay of uh, the economy. Then trade, usually through trade and butter, extension of goods for goods, and leadership, mostly monarchy. Even in Europe, you discover the leadership then was mostly but uh, more monarchy. Around 1750, the first emergence of revolution officially, however, why I say officially, 
there were few industrial advancements in some parts of the world, including Africa then. For example, before the first industrial revolution, which largely took place in Britain, particularly in Manchester and Liverpool. Prior to that, there was a significant development that you may wish to call it industrial revolution in places like Andalus, that is the present day Spain, which will comprise around maybe 70% of a modern day Spain, from around Madrid coming down to Malaga, Cadiz, Granada, Sevilla, and many more, which almost may be 90% of Portugal, and also the southern part of France, which will accommodate places like Monaco, Lyon, and the rest. These are the places that comprise the Andalus then. Over 800 years ago, there was a significant industrial or technological development in these places. The same with Cairo in Africa. If you go and see the pyramids, which is among the seven wonders of the world, and these pyramids were built over, some of them over 4,000 years ago, you will discover that even the technology of today will suffer before building that pyramid. Look at the geometry there. Without technological advancement, that cannot be achieved. The same with uh, modern Baghdad, which is part of Iran, there was a significant development at that time. But officially, what is documented as the first industrial revolution commenced around 1750 up to around 1840, covering around 90 years. And the major milestone there was on steam power or steam energy. Prior to that revolution, the majority of our people in the world used to drive energy either through human force directly, or animal force, or wind force, or water force. Usually, there wasn't any engine to drive any vehicle or any commodity from one place to another. They used to rely so much on their physical energy. Sometimes using animals like donkey, horse, camel, and others. Sometimes they rely on wind to generate energy. Sometimes on water <coughs> to generate energy. Thank you. The major milestone then was the invention of our steam energy, driving energy, which was invented by Mr. James Watt around 1750. He came up with an idea on how to generate force without relying on your force or on your energy of an animal. This is what brought about the current day engines, where you can have a vehicle with an engine and it can drive easily. Aircraft with an engine. If you look at our ship with an engine carrying so many loads, but still will move from one place to another. And you will discover somebody driving, not just to even 80 kg. But if you look at the load on what he drives, it's just amazing. So that invention of a steam power, hosting energy around 1750, was the cornerstone, was the middle milestone of the first industrial revolution. And after that, by Mr. James Watt, around 32 years later, there was also an integration of his invention, which is more of a establishing what was called then steam boat. Steam boat used to convey people from one point to another, crossing rivers, seas and oceans at that time. That was the second industrial, or rather the first, the integration of the first industrial revolution. 
And that steam boot, the technology was integrated at two different stages by two previous scientists. The first one was done at that time was to be serving people around Delaware River. And the second integration was from Britain up to the US through the Atlantic Ocean. And at that time, even the commercialization of that uh, mode of transportation commenced, which was around 1835. So the first industrial revolution was largely on steam power or steam energy as we know. And you will discover historically only few people came up with that. And they completely changed the world. They saved our time, they saved our energy. And all the current technological advancement we have been seeing when it comes to power or energy has been built on the previous invention of society. During the first industrial revolution, the advancement and the invention were mostly around Manchester and Liverpool. At that time, there was even a competition of a coming up with a red line between the two cities of Manchester and Liverpool. They invented the first rail line where people were conveyed to railways. The advancement of steam boot at that time was significantly promoted by Fulton. He was the first one to integrate or bring more development on the previous inventions, particularly that of James Watt, where he came up with a steam boot that was being used for commercialization purposes. Moving from one point to another, particularly within Atlantic Ocean, Delaware and other places, connecting Europe and America, that is North America and South America. Furthermore, the second industrial revolution commenced around 1850s. And that one, many countries in Europe were involved. The first industrial revolution largely in Britain, while the second industrial revolution, many countries during Britain, they were called the chest group. They were chasing Britain at that time. They were chasing the current day the United Kingdom. The chest group led by Belgium, Germany, France, and the United States of America. The second industrial revolution was largely on electricity. Then mass production, then mining, like exploration and production of natural resources. So it is largely on that, particularly electricity and also the invention of a communication channels where you can sit in one part of the world and communicate with someone in another part of the world. And the major discovery at that time to facilitate communication was invented through the invention of a telegram by Samuel Morse, which was around 1851. It was a major one where people have the opportunity to communicate from one part of the world to another. And all the modern day communication channels we have have been built on the previous invention. Furthermore, the invention of a transistor, for example, which is another milestone that uh, facilitates communication today by two leading scholars, John Bradley and William Shockley. They invented around 1570, sorry, 1878. And they are among the first people to receive Nobel Prize Award because of that. And even Albert Einstein was part of the Second Industrial Revolution. He did a lot in physics. And he also won his own Nobel Prize around 
1920, because the second industrial revolution commenced around 1850 up to around 1920. And also electricity, as I earlier mentioned, was invented. Even telephone was invented by Alexander Bell at that time. All of them within the second industrial revolution. So you will discover in each one, only few individuals emerge to change the whole world. And that is why we always speak about the developed countries. Why? These are the people that make their countries to be the developed countries. And thirdly, the third industrial revolution, which commenced around 1920, up to around 2000, largely on IC.